John chapter 2 verse 1 to 5. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When you get married invite Jesus. When they ran out of wine the mother of Jesus said to him they have no wine and Jesus said to her woman only Jesus gets away with calling his mother woman. What does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, as though she didn't, just didn't hear what he said. Whatever he says to you, do it. This is where the Nike took it from. Just do it. <laughs> A wedding a wedding is when Jesus's first miracle happened. It wasn't in the church, it wasn't in the crusade, it was in the wedding. But the peculiar thing is the fact that in the wedding he did not heal someone. His first miracle was not delivering someone from the devil. Sadly, his actually first, first miracle wasn't even saving a soul. His first miracle was providing to a group of people something that they could live without. He didn't give them what they needed. He gave them something they could easily go without. A wine in those days, it was a luxury. A water was a necessity. Now imagine at that time there were people, children in the world dying because there was no good nourishment and no water. And here is Jesus begins his ministry on earth almost it seems like wasting his power creating something that is not a necessity when there are people who don't have a necessity. I want to talk to you about faith today. And the first thing I want us to learn about faith is that it's as important to meet our needs as it is to fulfill our dreams. Many people will have faith to meet their need. But the Jesus we see in the Bible does not only meet your needs, Jesus Christ also wants to get through your needs into the area of his mission, his purpose and his dream for your life. Can somebody say amen? Any dreamers we have in the house? Or am I just speaking? Okay, okay. I just wasn't sure if anybody here who actually had a dream. Jesus is interested in not just meeting your needs. If he would only be interested in meeting your needs on this wedding, this is what would have happened. He would have turned wine into water. The Jesus I grew up knowing as a child only turns wine into water. He takes all the good and gives you just enough to make it through. He's not interested in blessing you. He's interested in helping you get through life because it's all about heaven. The Jesus I was taught as a child, he's not Jesus that makes luxury. That not just meets the necessities because wine was a luxury. And not only that, but he makes it in abundance. But the Jesus that I was told about, maybe you heard about that Jesus. He's only interested in giving you water. He's only interested in just letting you get through life. But the Jesus we see here, that's a first miracle that was not a necessity. It was a luxury. That means our God is as interested in meeting our needs as he is in fulfilling our dreams. If your idea of God, the closer I get to him, the less dreams I will have, I want to tell you something today, that is not our God. Because when people got close to God, he gave them dreams that freaked them out. Moses said, I can't do this, too big. Gideon said, God, who did you think I am? every person God called and God came to talk to they said didn't say God my dreams are bigger they were so blown out by God's dream they said God I can't take it our God doesn't kill dreams our God births dreams when we come close to him can somebody say amen God is interested not just in fulfilling our needs and this is where our faith comes from 
you have to have faith not only for your healing you have to have faith not only just to get by you have to have faith not just Lord I just want to get through this very difficult time you have to begin to foster flourish a faith inside of you God you have something even more for me than this God is on a different planet God is not Baptist he's not Pentecostal he's not Russian he's not Mexican and he's not American God is God amen he's not limited to the box of your upbringing your traditions or your paradigm God is not limited to none of these things he is all by himself like the, there's a story about that um, prince of uh, one of the uh, one of the Middle Eastern countries who came and picked up one of the golf players uh, very professional golf players from the United States and they took him to his home hometown and he wanted to learn how to play golf better and so he took this professional golf player and they played for three days and then he brought him back on his private jet to America and upon arriving back in, in America he asked this golf player he says I just very thankful to you that you uh, gave me three days of your life and that you spent time with me is there anything I can give you and the guy said no I, don't, I have everything I make good money I am I am well off and the prince said well it's disrespectful to say no to a prince so please tell me what can I give you and the guy said I, I don't know uh, get, get me uh, give me a golf club just to say something the guy said oh, okay thank you I will get you a golf club a few weeks passed by and he didn't get any anything from the prince and then he got a letter from the prince it was it was sealed uh it was a it was specific special letter so he was trying to think in his mind how can a golf club fit into a letter until he opened it and he saw a title due to a largest golf club in the United States <laughs> see when a king heard golf club he wasn't thinking about a stick he was thinking about real estate <laughs> that's how big your God is God is bigger than that see your God is not a president your God is not a senator your God is not just religious your God is the king of kings and lord of lords he has no luxury of thinking small that's why when Jesus shows up he shows off his glory he shows off his power and God wants you and I to have this understanding he is bigger than your needs he wants to help you fulfill your desires can somebody say amen you know when when King Saul was once approaching a Samuel he came to Samuel and Saul had donkey problem he couldn't find donkeys his daddy sent him to find donkeys as he approaches Samuel the Bible says that Samuel approaches him and says uh, Saul I will tell you tomorrow what's on your heart oh as about the donkeys they are found and now your daddy is worried about you and the next day prophet tells Saul you're gonna be a king and of course Saul does exactly the same thing he says not me who do you think I am I'm too small it's interesting that Saul donkeys were on his mind but destiny was inside of his heart he didn't even want to admit that don destiny was inside Saul dreamed of being a king when there was no king in Israel and the prophet meets him and he says listen listen your life is so wrapped up around donkeys that's all you're living and he says God wants to get through your donkeys but really God's goal and the mission of the prophetic is not just to fix the donkey problems it's to get through the donkey problems into the destiny issue you were destined for more than just to fix donkey issues can somebody say amen you were destined more than just paying rent working eight hours a day you were destined more than just getting married just having children you were destined for more than just getting your papers you were destined for more than just paying off your car you were destined for more than listen that just simply getting through this thing God wants to get through the donkey but he says inside of you is a destiny you don't even want to admit to a destiny so large a calling so big that you are saying no 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 it's there but God this is so big I can't even comprehend it that's why it takes the prophetic to get through your dead donkeys into your destiny can somebody say amen you know when I was younger the devil used a lot of donkeys to wrap around my life just for one thing because he wanted me to be busy chasing just the things in this world busy trying to be insecure 
busy trying to be this and that as long as I do not take any time to look into the fact that God of heaven placed something bigger inside of my chest and that is a vision and a dream not just to survive not just to live not just to live to 70 and die but to make a difference in this world for his kingdom because somebody say amen have faith come on let's put our hands together for the Lord have faith have faith please it's not just about finishing your diploma it's not just about getting through school it's not just about getting married and it's not just about having a million dollar in your retirement it's about fulfilling the destiny God has placed you for amen the second key of faith is trust in what God said in the face of what God has not done yet when Mary approaches Jesus during this problem she tells him that they have no wine and Jesus does not give her a talk on drunkenness is a sin she's asking Jesus to make something that is on the borderline sinful she's asking Jesus to do something that if people take too much they are gonna slip into another side where the Bible calls it sin she's asking Jesus to make a miracle on the wedding now later on we see down that this was the first miracle um, verse 11 beginning of his signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee which tells us this was the first time Jesus did a miracle there are Gnostic Gospels that talk about the fact that Jesus when he was a child like he walked on on water and he would go to school and just like you know make things appear and disappear and he make these like really cool things and while I love to entertain that idea it could make a great fiction movie it's not scriptural the Bible tells us Jesus as a child as a teenager as a young adult did not do anything that made him stand out from any other person which tells me begs the question how could Mary have the audacity to ask Jesus to do a miracle at the wedding when she has not seen him do one miracle for 30 years how can you ask him first of all how that, that thought even circulates within your mind what makes you think he will do it now if he has never done it for 30 years has anybody here has some things God has not done no hand raising because I don't want no hands raising because we don't want all the hands to go up I think every single person in this room this is where the challenging of faith is is when you are walking with God and there are things God doesn't do what it does to our faith typically it destroys your faith you ask once or maybe you prayed for someone or maybe you believed for something and you don't see it happen or maybe you tithe and you see all these miracles you're like not happening in my life it's just not getting better you see the testimony of someone saying that they got healed and and your situation maybe progresses you see you know a testimony of someone else being you know depressed and they got free and you're recognizing that for you this is just not happening and so what happens is that many times when we are surrounded by what God has not done what it tends to do is it tends to cripple and it tends to shake and break our faith to the foundations where we just give up and we just live with God and we say you know what Lord Jesus does not do any miracles people go as far as to create a doctrine that miracles ended with the death of apostles but Mary has faith Jesus is going to do something where did she get that faith because long time ago 30 years before the wedding Gabriel came into the room and Gabriel said this the child you are gonna have will be supernatural and he is the Messiah and she experienced something in her body that wasn't natural and after that she believed in the word Gabriel spoke 
that even she did not see Jesus do a one miracle she went back to the words spoken by the archangel and she said to herself even if I will live 70 years and I will not see one miracle this boy is not normal Jesus this is Messiah and he will do wonders and he will change things in this world Do not let your faith be destroyed by what God has not done. Let your faith be strengthened by what God said. God said that He heals people. We believe in that. Do you know why we believe in healing? Not because healings happen at the revival with wise men Harry or because healings happen in TB Joshua's church or because healings happen in Benny Hinn's crusade or because healings happen in Ray Hart Bonkis or Dr. Young Chose. It's not because healings happen in my family. We don't believe in healing because healings happen at the race to deliver conference. We believe in healing because in Isaiah it says by his stripes we were not will be one day hopefully maybe we were healed. And as long as that word is true, my faith stands on that word. But what if my mom passed away? What if my brother, what if there's a pain in my back? This word holds the universe on one upon which I walk. This word never changes. My situation can always change. God's word will never change. And I trust God's word. Trust God's word. Even if you don't see certain things don't happen maybe you you prayed for something and it didn't get answered and your faith gets shaken how can I pray for something else now remember your faith is not based on the answer to your prayer it gets strengthened by that your faith always has to be rooted in the promise and in the word of God how could Smith Wigglesworth who raised over 18 people from the dead have kidney stones for most of his ministry time and had to run from the service to the bathroom to urinate with blood how come his own daughter was sitting deaf most of the service so you can say how can you pray and raise people from the dead and at the same time go to the bathroom and have kidney stones that are killing you see a man like Smith Wigglesworth was a man like Mary he didn't see some of that activity in his body but he saw it in God's word and he stood at both feet and before he passed away both the kidney stones and the deafness of his daughter were completely healed but even if they wouldn't, God's word does not change. Put your faith in God's word. When you don't see God's act, see God's word. And that's what Mary did. Didn't see Jesus act. Do you think this is the first time that Mary asked Jesus to do a miracle? I don't think so. Come on, let's, let's think realistically. Here you have a Messiah living in your house. And one of the neighbor's kids broke their leg. Wouldn't you ask your Messiah? could you do something <laughs> you're running low on rent hey Jesus you have any tricks in your under your sleeve come on you're the messiah you're like oh you would never a David killed a Goliath as a teenager wouldn't you come to your teenager when the Roman Empire is invading your village says Jesus do you have anything of that of course you would Mary asked Jesus probably numerous of times and it's interesting that every time Jesus says nope mm -mm, not gonna happen Mary you can't do that we can't talk about it that's a secret we can do it and she keeps coming and now it's the wedding it's the worst time of all this is when God doesn't do miracles weddings you know especially the problem with wine he definitely doesn't do those miracles and and Mary comes to Jesus has the audacity to ask him to do something he has never done for 30 years and Jesus did it don't trip over what God has not done step over it step over it the devil will put that in every person who steps into what God is doing first had the possibility of tripping over what God has not done don't trip even if you've prayed for someone even if maybe it's in your family maybe it happened in your own body maybe you went through a divorce maybe you went through a death in the family maybe you went through a bankruptcy maybe you couldn't finish the school maybe you trusted in God something and you completely missed it and after that you're saying I won't hear God again I won't try anything again I tried doing a home group I tried to serve God I tried morning prayers and it's just I couldn't fall through and what you do is you trip and the devil laughs over it but little did you know you were once step away from your miracle don't trip 
over what God has not done step over it it hurts you won't make sense there will be doubts there will be confusion but listen God told to Samuel stop crying over the fact that Saul didn't turn out what you thought it would be fill your horn with oil go to a town of Bethlehem and I have prepared a king means when you've met with the disappointment God already has an appointment and a calendar your next miracle but don't trip over Saul step over it kindly with respect step over it and go to your Bethlehem and begin again that's why God says mercies are new every morning every morning God resets the clock and says let's begin again that's why Jesus told disciples when you go into a city and they say get away from us Jesus says don't accumulate rejection on your feet he says the moment you leave that city no matter how painful it is no matter what they threw at your face shake it off step into a new city as though you're coming for the first time with a smile on your face step with the joy with an expectation that this city will have revival forget about the things of the past why because I'm making things new somebody say man restore your faith today if it got damaged because you haven't seen God do something step over it and you will see God do something because somebody say amen. amen number three God's will never changes even when God's timing does God's will never changes but God's timing does you know what Jesus' response was to not wanting to do a miracle Jesus said this you know how many people say when uh, when they ask you something and we say this religious thing sometimes we don't mean it I'll pray about it which means don't talk about it to me again it's over it's, it almost seemed like Jesus is response was not my time yet it's like what is that supposed to mean when is your time but it's interesting Jesus says sir not my time and if that would be I or you you'll be like great I'll check with 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 you what in 24 hours two hours two days the moment Mary heard not my time Mary turns around as though she did not hear anything he just said and call the servants he says are you guys ready for what for a miracle why because his time changes and in the next verse Jesus changed the time do you know how fast God's timing can change like this one moment God says no and next second he says yes one moment God says hold off and the next second God says here is the open door God's will never changes God's clock always does don't let God's clock blur your view of God's will don't let God's clock confuse you concerning God's character and God's faithfulness just because certain thing has not manifested yet certain thing has not made real certain thing didn't look right to you yet that does not mean God has changed the season the clock you are in is changing is changing but God's character is unchanging can somebody say amen you know the story of Joseph is very peculiar because Joseph when he was a little boy he got this nice garment from his dad it was a, co a coat of many colors and he this coat symbolized that Joseph was the favorite Joseph it's like getting a car on your you know 16th birthday brand new and the rest of your siblings are driving a bicycle that's kind of what it was it was an insult to the rest of the kids and and this kid he got a coat and the Bible says when he got that coat he started to get dreams and in his dreams he saw everybody bowing to him it's kind of hard to dream bad dreams when you got nice coat when you have people speaking over your life and saying you're awesome, you're beautiful, you're handsome, you're strong, you're gonna make it. People like that tend to have dreams, not nightmares. Dreams, not fears. And Joseph gets this beautiful coat and one day his brothers, they rip that coat from him. And they dip it in blood. And then Joseph goes into Potiphar's home and they give him another coat. It was a coat of a slave. And we know Potiphar's wife, she didn't waste any time. She ripped that coat from Joseph as well. 
Joseph goes into the prison where he is now a prisoner. He is a coat of a prisoner and the moment Pharaoh had a dream, the Bible says when they called Joseph into the Pharaoh's court, they ripped that clothes from him as well and then we see last time when Pharaoh puts a clothes of a prime minister on Joseph. That's a lot of changing of clothes. Four changes of clothes. It's very interesting because in every season when his clothes changed, Bible used this word and the Lord was with Joseph. In a dry pit and the Lord was with Joseph. When Joseph is in jail and the Lord was with Joseph. When Joseph is a servant, he has a death certificate laying in the house and the Lord was with Joseph. When Joseph was a prime minister and the Lord was with Joseph. Your seasons will change. God will never change. God will never leave you and God will never abandon you. God will never forsake you. Can somebody say amen? And that's why I want to challenge every person tonight. Do not become attached to your season. Your season may be today a season of being on the top of the mountain. Don't think God loves you more because you're happy. Your season may be today in the low valley. Don't think God left you because you can sense Him or feel Him or see Him no more. And the Lord was with Joseph. God's character, God's will, it never changes. It stays permanent. That's what makes Him God. That's why He's trustworthy. That's why He beckons faith in Him because He is unmovable, unshakable. But His clock is always ticking. That means that your, your situation today, tomorrow it could be completely different. That means that your problem today, in the next five minutes, that could be completely shifted. That means that whatever you are in today, in the next minute, God can completely shift the situation around. God's clock is on the move because God stands still. Can somebody say amen? Have your faith anchored in God's character. And always know, because God is immovable, my situation is going to move. Joblessness is going to move. The fact that you're single, ready to mingle and you can't find nobody, that could move. The fact that maybe your children are not serving God and they completely have nothing to do with God. Listen, that is able to move. Why? Because God does not move. Hallelujah. God's clock can move. Amen. Lastly, ridiculous obedience brings radical miracles. Jesus did not call his disciples for a first miracle to assist him because they would question him to death probably. Jesus did not ask other people who were important to do what he just asked only one category of people who blindly sometimes without asking questions and foolishly would obey some of the most ridiculous orders given by people. He chose servants because servants don't ask questions. They do what they're told. And you know what he asked them? He said to put water into the vessels. That's not complicated. That's simple. That's done before. It will be done after. It's what he said next that was so ridiculous and honestly could cost them their jobs. It's when he said take some of this water, take it to the man in charge and tell him try the new wine. Now if that would be you, be like Jesus, that's your business. You go do that. I can bring the water. I can mix it. I can do whatever. I'll dance around it. But you go tell him that that's your wine. Because you can't be doing this and you're hiding in the background and sending me to get embarrassed. But see, servants don't give Jesus opinions. They said, yes sir. Ridiculous obedience unleashes radical miracle painful obedience releases radical miracles when you're a single person and you're in high school and it seems like everyone is sleeping around everyone is using drugs and your obedience to God makes you not fit into certain circles your obedience to God makes some people look at you with that weird look your obedience to God simply means that that hot boyfriend or that hot guy who everybody wants to be and he's winking at you there's nothing between you and him can happen because he doesn't walk with Christ and your obedience maybe costs you some emotional pain but remember it's that kind of obedience that turns your boring water life into God's exciting miraculous wine
it's when you are dating and you have a wedding plans and Jesus asks you to abstain purity wise and disobedience doesn't make sense we're gonna be married five months from now with the same spouse what difference does it make it's all love and you have all of these reasons but this is where you have to take the obedience even if it makes you a little bit uncomfortable even if it complicates things and even if it brings a little bit discomfort and pain and so Lord ridiculous obedience brings a radical miracles in my marriage it's when you're married and your spouse is not there for you your spouse doesn't share same passion with you it's when you're married and they don't support you as much and they're not there for the children or maybe they're completely ignoring you and you feel like you're alone over there and there's someone old fleeing on Facebook and this is where God wants you to honor your husband love your wife when you honestly feel like loading a rifle and doing something completely different and honoring them is painful loving that is painful it's when you are a child and your parents tell you you can't go to church and their life is falling apart and they're turning against you for lame reasons and you're saying how can I honor someone who hurts me like that who doesn't lift me up who beats me down emotionally and my obedience to God is so painful it makes me look like a victim it makes me look so weak but listen that's exactly what happens before a radical miracle radical miracles don't happen to anybody they happen to servants who put on obedience and even if it doesn't make them look good can somebody say amen can somebody say amen it's when you come to church and you could have really really bought those new shoes with that money that you have put on tithing and the shoes went on sale on Amazon and it's exactly it's exactly same as your tithe and you said I deserve these shoes I haven't been doing anything bad and and you're putting it in the, in, in the basket and you're looking someone else and they're walking with exactly same shoes and the devil is sending lies and said listen that's a sign from heaven give tithe don't give look it's so painful who in the world even gives nowadays you don't know what they spend money did you see the car Vlad drives he probably steals that money and the, the devil lies to you and says don't, 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 don't give don't give when your obedience is painful your reward is gonna be pleasant you know what encourages me when my obedience is painful what encourages me is the fact that if I don't obey God I will experience pain just a little bit later because you will play now pay later or you will pay now and play later but you will pay <laughs> Jesus obeyed God and he was on the cross but can I remind you he wasn't the only one on the cross there was other two guys who disobeyed God and were there the only difference between Jesus and them is they went to the grave and Jesus had Sunday morning yeah it looked like Joseph obeyed God end up in prison and Samson flirted with anything that moved huh Samson also was in prison he got to prison as well the only difference is Samson came out of his prison to his funeral and Joseph came out of his prison to his promotion every one of us will go through hard times even if you obey God you will go to hard times first can I say it again every one of us will go through hard times if you obey God you will go through hard times first and promotion later the Bible says the pleasure in God's hands is evermore but the pleasures of sin are passing I want to challenge every person today don't just obey God when it's convenient don't just obey God when it's easy it's the obedience that hurts it's the obedience where you have doubts with that brings the most results the Bible says God exalted Jesus' name above every name but it's not because he was his son it's not because Jesus did miracles it's not because Jesus had a virgin birth the Bible says because he obeyed till the point of death God doesn't give exaltation to people he likes he gives exaltation to people who obey Amen.
God will see you through. A miracle is on the way to your life but your faith will be shaken so that it will be unshakable and your miracle will be permanent in Jesus name.